Well, in the last 48 hours, Kenyans have been treated to an embarrassing, nay, an appalling Twitter meltdown from Uganda's president's son, General Muhozi Kainerubaga, who boasted of being able to take over Nairobi in just two weeks. Much as he has since dismissed that as a joke, never mind that he was rewarded by his daddy with a military promotion for it. There are serious human rights violations being raised by Ugandans who have been forced into exile. Civil rights activists in Uganda are calling on the international community to intervene just days after the family members of a Ugandan journalist were kidnapped, something she believes was triggered by a story she covered criticizing President Yoweri Museveni's government. Musician turned politician and activist Bobby Wine adds that kidnapping have become the method of instilling fear in those who criticize the government. Gina Kirori has that report for us. In 2021, in the wake and aftermath of Uganda's elections, widespread reports of arrests and abductions of hundreds of activists and dissenting voices began to surface. But even after the dust from the election settled, Ugandan citizens cried out over assault, intimidation, and threats on their lives. I like to mention that the outstanding opposition figure Bobby Wine, who challenged President Museveni in the 2021 general election, has been on the receiving end of the regime that has clamped down on any voice raised against the establishment. Even right now, as we speak, um, about an hour ago, I was informed that another of our comrades was abducted. Among the latest cases of abduction is Remy Bahati's relatives. Remy, who worked as a journalist in Uganda before moving to the U.S., says that it all began when she wrote an article criticizing the Ugandan government. When I did that interview, I was told by the government to delete it off from my social media platforms before it went viral. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was a decision for me to make, and I did not do that. The article gained the attention of U.S. President Joe Biden, following recommendations by the U.S. Congressional Foreign Committee that any officer found culpable be sanctioned. A few days later on October 1st, armed men drove to her family home in Fort Portal and took her relatives away. My brother is Kelvin Katunji. He's 38 years old. My cousin is Mugume Latif. He's 22 years old and their friend was only identified by the locals as Abala. Since then, Remy has made several desperate attempts to get answers from the Uganda Police Defense Forces and the police. The Ugandan People's Defense Force confirmed to Remy that they have her brother in custody, but the photos they posted of him were not him, and no official charges have been issued against them. What is happening in Uganda is happening not just because we have a ruthless president. It is happening because it has been tolerated by the world. Remy is demanding that the state releases her brother, cousin, and their friend immediately and unconditionally, hoping for her brother's safe return and for a day when criticizing the government is no longer a threat to life. I would like to ask the state to stop retaliating on journalists, human rights activists who are critical of the regime. Freedom of expression and speech is a constitutional right that should not be suppressed. Are you fearful of your life? Are you fearful of the consequences of you raising your voice about some of the issues happening in Uganda? I fear for my life every day. But at least me, I know that I'm in danger. So many people are in danger and they don't know, you know. I like to mention that while it's dangerous to speak out, it's even more dangerous to keep quiet. Those in the civil rights space are also calling on sister states and the world at large to stop turning a blind eye to the human rights injustices taking place in Uganda. I was frustrated when, when uh, President Ruto uh, regarded General Museveni as the father of, uh, of a region because is that the kind of uh, father that we want? Gina Kirori, NTV.